Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Planet X News, January 4th, 2024. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I guess it's been quite a while since you've actually heard from me. A lot of you do know that back in July of last year, I contracted Lyme disease mysteriously. And um, it was a pretty tough time. I am doing somewhat better. Um, I did get most of my speech back, but every now and then that fails on me. I don't know exactly what is going on. I'm kind of starting to feel like a targeted individual. I've had some relapses with the Lyme disease and a lot of problems with my vision, uh, my lungs, and uh, just the, these relapses kind of cripple me uh, as far as, you know, the pain in my joints, hips, knees, elbows, shoulders, even waking up in the middle of the night with your, uh, your fingers completely curled in to the point where you have to pry them back open. Um, it has also from time to time reaffected my speech, but uh, I've got most of that back. You know, it, 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 there comes a time when you just have to straight cut through the BS and pour out the truth. There's a lot of things happening right now on this planet and I want all of you to just listen to me very carefully. I never thought that this Planet X object, this stellar core that Dr. Albers and I discovered, I never thought that it was actually going to destroy the earth. What I have been finding out and digging into research wise over the last 90 days, since I've kind of been, you know, somewhat incapacitated, um, my eyesight's very bad. So, you know, reading at this point in time is kind of tough. Um, I've tried different kinds of readers and things of that nature, but it, it's just not working. My eyes aren't focusing uh, correctly. But anyways, you know what I've been researching and, and what I've been putting together is kind of on a vicious timeline. And everything is pointing to, you know, maybe six or seven years from, from this point on that catastrophic occurrences on this planet are going to increase tenfold. The last couple of years, we've noticed quite a significant uptick in, you know, volcanic activity, earthquake activity, our jet stream in complete disarray. The sun has awoken like a beast. And a lot of you, uh, you know, see this information on YouTube, social media. Uh, I've been documenting it. Yes, you know, I continue with my, my work on a daily basis. There are several problems right now that are occurring that I never really expected. There was a lot of talk in the past years of a pole shift. A lot of times people mistake these pole shifts with our magnetic pole shift and a crustal pole shift. From what I am seeing and what I have been researching almost all of last year is 
definitely pointing to this magnetic pole shift. There are scientists around the world that are kind of blowing the whistle, if I have to use that term. All of their past timelines have been sped up. And that is a major problem. We are already seeing the effects of a magnetic pole shift. We're already seeing it. Now, today in this presentation, I don't have a bunch of videos and pictures to show you. I don't want to bore you. I just want you to listen. All of the evidence is out there, but there are a few factors that they are leaving out. So what would possibly increase this timeline for a magnetic pole shift, which will be catastrophic to this planet. Now, you may be thinking of an instantaneous pole shift where everything just happens at once and we're all obliterated off of this earth. Okay, well, that's not exactly how it happens. It does happen slowly. Yes, it could happen very quickly. But I believe what we are seeing now is a sped up version of their timeline that these scientists have been creating for decades. But we really never noticed anything until now. All of the evidence is there. And, and later on, you know, in, in a few more episodes here on Planet X News, we'll, we'll go into that. We'll use the pictures and the graphs and I'll produce the evidence for you. But I, again, I just want you to listen to my voice. So we know that this is occurring. But why has the timeline become so rapid? And if we take a look at what is orbiting our sun, the latest photographs that I was able to obtain are on your screen now. You're looking at the main culprit on your screen now. In order for this object orbiting the sun to cause the sun to produce such massive explosions, multiple explosions known as coronal mass ejections, or as we refer to them as CMEs. Massive filament releases over the last several months. Non-stop. Solar maximum, yes, we are in the midst of it. I read a science report and an abstract not too long ago from solar scientists stating that this solar maximum may be extended beyond its 11 years, which is supposed to peak in 2025, a year from now. And then, and then a few more years as it steadily decreases, moving closer and closer to 2030. And we've all seen these so-called conspiracy theories out there about Agenda 2030, Agenda 2050, blah, blah, blah. But in reality, some of that is very, very true. Because at the rate of acceleration of this magnetic pole shift, it is pinpointing 2029 into 2030. We are seeing massive, massive storms and floods all over the world. 
They call it what? Climate change. Well, of course, climates are changing. They're changing all over the world, but it's not because of man. The earth is wobbling on its axis. That wobble has increased. It has steadily been increasing. I can no longer get that data. The website that monitored that has been shut down. It is gone. I think the last, uh, the last uh, graph that I got, I do believe it might have been October. That increased wobble has completely destroyed the jet stream in both hemispheres. That is a fact. I have been sounding that alarm for years. These massive cyclonic weather systems, just a few months ago, uh, ripping across the Atlantic, a lot of damage and flooding in Scotland, Ireland, the UK, France, Germany, Spain, all of these European countries caught by these large cyclonic storms. Some of them just absolutely mind-blowing massive. There are now storms just as I am expressing to you now, that have again been forming in the Pacific, impacting the west coast of the United States. Ice melt in the northern hemisphere, ice melt in the southern hemisphere, referring to the Arctic and the Antarctic. Unprecedented. Temperatures in the southern hemisphere. Take, for instance, Australia. Every single summer now, probably for about the last 10 years, the temperatures during the summer period in Australia have just magnified. If you're Australian and you're listening to me now, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So this is happening very rapidly. I believe this rapid onset is due to the interaction of this magnetic ball orbiting our sun, which has a massive influence on our sun now, and especially during a solar maximum. It is my belief, and from what I see in my evidence, this is leading to the rapid onset of a magnetic shift. The earth has gone through it many, many, many times. It was kind of on a timeline. But now this time, that timeline is much faster. And there is nothing that we can do about it. Will the earth itself shift on its axis, I do believe that it will. I don't know to what degree, but even the slightest degree change will be catastrophic. Will it end mankind? I don't think that it would be that catastrophic, that it would, it would wipe out every human being on this planet. Why? Well, let's take a look at that. It's just come out just recently. You know, Bill Gates building massive underground bunkers. Mark Zuckerberg building a massive underground bunker. We already know that all of the large world governments already have these things in place. But then... There comes the aspect of controlling the population, herding the sheeple, getting them to do what you want. 
So there are kind of two extinctions. One which would be brought on kind of by a natural source of a magnetic pole flip, the influence of the stellar object on the sun, the sun having, you know, uh, major effects on the earth as we speak. And then there's that other aspect of the elite wanting to maintain power. And even in the most catastrophic situation where mankind would have to rebuild, rebuild everything, rebuild the entire infrastructure of multiple nations and countries on this planet, salvage what is left. And what will you need to accomplish that? You will need manpower. You will need a slave race to rebuild everything, which could take decades, possibly a century, starting over. So just let me put this... Uh, hypothesis of mine, these ideas that I am not the only one coming up with. And I am in 100% uh, agreement with some other truthers out there. So let's skip over to this massive immigration problem that we have seen getting worse and worse and worse as the years have gone by. Now, everybody sees it, but they don't understand why. Why are all of these people from South America and Central America and all of these people from the African nations and a lot of people from the Middle Eastern nations being pushed into the European countries and the United States and Canada. You don't see this occurring in China or Russia, do you? No, you do not. But why are they all being pushed into the United States, into the European countries. Have you ever, ever thought that the elite who will be safe in their underground bunkers for a very long period of time, governments will be underground, who will rebuild these nations? and be in complete control of their captors. So it seems to me that the United States, Canada, a large number of the European countries are like a Noah's Ark. They will need people who are more easily manipulated simply by food and shelter to create a slave race to rebuild after the devastation which will come. I'm not trying to be a fear monger, folks, but the evidence is there. We are seeing it. This object that, that I discovered, I never thought in a million years that it would be the doom and gloom of this planet. But it is one of the problems. It is accelerating this magnetic pole flip. And again, the Earth has gone through this naturally many, 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 many times. All of the evidence has been proven. But has anybody produced a factor 
why this time it is accelerating. Something has been pulling on this planet and every single planet in our solar system over the last decade has gone through massive changes. You just don't hear about it. I do believe now that we are looking at a very possible extinction level event. However, all of the powers that be in the world governments and the elite and whatever you want to call them, they've known about it. They have technology that we haven't even seen before and will never see. They have anticipated what will occur. Now, they're not the smartest out there. They kind of show their cards quite frequently. But what I am seeing is a massive Noah's Ark of people from around the world being herded into the United States, Canada, and a lot of the European countries. Geographically, they must have direct information on possibly, uh, how could I put this, maybe to what degree the Earth's tilt may be during this magnetic pole flip. They must have that information. Will there be massive floods and tidal waves like, uh, you know, like we used to talk about years ago? Will that occur? Yes. Will the earth crack open due to massive earthquakes? Yes, it will. Look what just happened in Japan. Devastation. We have seen the magnitude of earthquakes steadily increasing. The regularity of volcanic activity around the globe has increased. Everything that we've talked about in all of these past years has been elevated. There is no doubt about that. So if you're opening the floodgates for all of these countries to come into the United States, now it seems to me that the United States is this corral where all of these people are being literally herded. You could bring politics into it, and you know, politics are definitely a part of it. But we are fighting some very, very evil forces. They, they have the ability to just single in on an individual and just destroy them. Not take them out, you know, as it kill them. That's also possible. But they do have their ways of taking an individual such as myself and others and creating such horrific problems in your life financially, your health, a roof over your head, 
everything. They have the ability to make your life miserable to the point where you get off subject. You basically shut up. The masses stop listening to you. Why? Because you're either sick or so unhealthy that you can't go on. All of a sudden, all kinds of things start happening to you. Do I fit that bill? Yes, I do. Do I believe these things have been done to me and have they been done to Dr. Elbers? I, I do believe that. We all know what it means to be a targeted individual. Maybe they want to keep you around to see what more you discover. Maybe you're not that big of a threat to just dispose of. My health hasn't been very good this, uh, this past year. And it has been uh, very, very trying. Um, you know, financially, yeah, they have ruined both uh, myself and Dr. Elbers. Have they put us on the, uh, on the edge? Most definitely. Over the course of the last couple of months, as I've trying to, you know, as I've, I've been trying to regain my health, regain my stamina, regain my thoughts, I started to notice something. And every time over the last 90 days that I wanted to jump on to this YouTube channel and talk to all of you after I, you know, regained my speech, um, the minute I would start getting things ready, hooking up my microphone, you know, getting my screen capturing software up and running, all of the thoughts in my head about what I wanted to say, what I wanted to go over with all of you, what I wanted to reveal, were almost instantly wiped out. And then I would sit here in front of my computer and uh, all of that momentum that I had going ended. It just ended. It, it's almost like my thoughts were erased. And then I'm sitting here at my desk with everything up and running, waiting, waiting to produce a video so all of you folks can stay in tune with me and what is going on. And before I could push that record button, it all went away. It's like somebody robbed my thoughts. Controlled, possibly, what I was thinking. And then you start to second guess yourself. Until you start to understand what possibly may be happening to you. Now I've gone into some very kind of deep meditation to try to clear my mind, clear my thoughts, push whatever is deterring me out of my head. And today was one of those days. It took me about an hour to gain this momentum, 
to get on this YouTube channel today and start to reveal what is about to happen. And again, I'm not here trying to scare anybody. What I am trying to do is educate the population, whoever is listening, that this is what we are going through now and what we are about to go through in the next six to seven years will probably be the worst time of your life. All of the things that are going on in the world today, they're all being done on purpose. They all have very ugly main goals. Those goals are to control the world population. There's really no need right now to create a massive depopulation plan because I believe that these elite and these culprits understand that in the, the few years to come, the, the magnetic pole shift will do it for them. Meaning, yes, many, many people will be gone. And again, what other reason would these countries have to just open the floodgates of immigration into their country and open the floodgates to people that, yes, they don't have it very, very good in, uh, you know, a lot of these African nations and these South American and Central American countries and, and also including the, the Middle Eastern countries. These are not racist statements of any kind. But it just goes to show you what they think about us. They are literally hurting these people into our countries like they are animals. And in turn, when the catastrophes hit and the smoke clears, again, you must have the workers to rebuild nations, probably new nations, because land masses on this planet will change. That is a hardcore fact. It is a very, very scary time. There is really nothing that we can do other than to kind of prepare. You know, remember years ago, everybody used to make fun of the preppers and all of the YouTube channels that were on this platform, these prepping channels. Yeah, they're, they're not too funny now, are they? Will they survive? Who knows? That is nothing but a roll of the dice. How will we survive? Again, that will be a roll of the dice. I could guarantee and tell you that, you know, living anywhere near any coastline, anywhere on this planet, will be your demise. Living anywhere near any fault line on this planet will be your demise. Are there safe places on this planet? Nobody knows that. Is 
it is basically all going to be a roll of the dice over the next, you know, it's going to gradually occur five and six into seven years from now. But again, folks, there was a main reason. There was a main reason for this 2030 and then into 2050. So what were they saying? Catastrophic failure leading into 2030. From 2030 to 2050, rebuild. Well, that could take 50 to 100 years. Who knows? Who knows? But all I know is all of those conspiracies that everybody out there for years tried to debunk what has happened. All of those conspiracy theories have been proven to be truth. They have proven to be truth. Am I scared? Well, you know, I'm 55 years old. I'm getting ready to celebrate a 56th birthday at the end of this month. I have done a lot in, in, in this life. Am I scared? Scared to die? I don't want to die. There are so many things that I would still like to investigate and see with my own eyes. I would like to grow old and see both of my children have families and, and, and children. Hell, I'd like to hit the Powerball for one of those big billion-dollar prizes. There's a lot of things that I would like to do. I think I've made my little tiny dot of a mark on this world. But I'm not afraid to die and leave this world. I want to stay and I want to help. But again, that's going to be a roll of the dice. Whether I am here or whether you are here. Starting today, live your life to the fullest. Now, I'm not saying go out and empty your bank account and, you know, go to Vegas and just, you know, go nuts. But start being happy, even with all of the cataclysms going on around us. Spend more time with your family. Spend more time at peace. Do the things that you want to do while you have the chance. It's tough. I mean, there's just, there's just no way around this, folks. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. I'm not feeding you a line of bullshit either. <laughs> um, I've been trying, well, you know, for about the last three months, I, you know, I've been trying to come to terms with this myself. I have entered into a tremendous amount of deep thought. Sometimes hours and hours on end. You know, and... Uh, I have a lot of my contacts on uh, on Twitter X now, as Elon Musk calls it, X instead of Twitter. 
that is kind of odd, you know, <laughs> referencing, you know, back to the old adage of Planet X, this stellar core. That kind of freaked me out whenever Elon Musk came out and renamed Twitter X. <laughs> but all my contacts are on Twitter uh, from around the globe. Uh, there are more people out there revealing the truth now uncensored on Twitter X. Forget about Facebook. You know, I have to be very careful what I put on uh, my Facebook personal page and my Planet X news page and, and other pages because, you know, they do monitor what I do. They suspend my, my, my Facebook pages constantly. So I have to kind of be careful. But I would say from this point on, um, I think that I have better control of my, my thoughts. Um, hopefully, I don't have uh, any more relapses, uh, you know, with this, this Lyme disease. Um, I didn't even realize that you could have relapses. I, I didn't even know that. The last one that I had, my God, uh, it almost felt like, you know, the very beginning. I, you know, woke up in the middle of the night and couldn't move my legs. Uh, my knees were locked up. Uh, my hips felt like they were broken. <laughs> you know, I had to climb and climb over and uh, use my desk chair and my desk to actually get myself up on my feet. And then I had a very, very hard time walking. It lasted for a better part of three days. You know, so I'm hoping that I don't keep having these relapses from this Lyme disease. Um, you know, it is definitely it has definitely affected my body in a very bad way. You know, but the uh, the aspect of uh, my mind not being motivated for some reason over the last several months, that caught my eye. I was able to pretty much pull myself out of it as of today. Thank God. Because there was this other side of me that felt really bad because, you know, all of you you know, relying on the information that I put out there and the things that I have discovered over the years and, and, and many other truthers. I don't know if, you know, this was purposely done to me to slow me down, to deter me. Hey, it's possible. And then I'm going to let you guys know... <laughs> about another very odd occurrence that uh, happened to me back in October. I was in a Walmart, my local Walmart, um, just actually picking up a few things that I could afford, you know, with the prices of everything going sky high. And, uh, you know, I'm pretty much always aware of my surroundings. I'm always watching people. I don't know, it's just a habit. But I was just lackadaisically, you know, pushing my shopping cart and I was kind of going down one of the main aisles and I went to turn into the frozen food section and just as I turned into the frozen food section, I felt this uh, piercing pain like a stabbing pain, uh, almost like I got stung by something, right directly in the back of my neck. Uh, I would say about maybe a quarter inch from my hairline in the back of my head, 
directly over my vertebrae, over my spine. Um, it felt like a little pinch, uh, you know, kind of almost like somebody plucking a hair out of the back of your neck. I immediately, you know, grabbed the back of my neck like, like anybody would, you know. And uh, I felt this, this teeny, teeny, tiny little micro bump right on the back of my neck, you know, maybe, maybe quarter inch from my hairline. And I thought, oh, did I get bitten by something? Did I get stung by something? There was nothing around, you know. And as the hours went by, you know, I just went on my way down the aisle, got the few things that I needed and headed out. Within hours, um, whatever that was started to uh, kind of swell and get a little bigger. Later that night, I kind of fell asleep at my desk and kind of woke up and my neck was hurting terribly. And uh, I put my hand back there and I felt a, a, a huge, solid, hard mass about the size of a quarter. And it was so painful that I could not move my neck. Now, granted, this is in October that just passed. Right after I've, you know, gotten over the Lyme disease and, you know, gone through all that traumatic crap, um, the very next day, well, I put a hot compress on it, you know, whatever, didn't work. The very next day that, whatever that was, it grew to the size of uh, just, just, let's say, like a, a soda can diameter, you know. It, it grew that that large and and it was raising up and it was solid as a rock which scared me so I immediately went to med Express and uh, they looked at it and they didn't know what it was and I asked, well, could you, could you lance that? And the doctor said, oh, no, no, can't do that. I'm going to have to give you some antibiotics. Maybe you got bitten by something. Uh, maybe it's a boil, but it doesn't look like one. The doctor said, I've never seen anything like that spread under the skin and, and, and be so rock hard. And again, I said, what is it? He had no idea. So I said, well, what are you going to do? Do I just continue to suffer? I can't even move my neck. The pain is excruciating. So he gave me uh, an antibiotic, uh, clendomycin, I think it was. He said, just take this. Uh, you know, we want to make sure that you don't, uh, you know, go septic with a, a very bad infection in your blood. So as the days went on, um, this thing grew horribly on the back of my neck. The pain was so bad, it affected the side muscles, you know, where your carotid artery is. Um, I could barely move my neck. Sleeping, forget about it. Uh, my thoughts, again, were completely drained. Uh, okay, so I started taking this antibiotic. I was on it for about a week. Nothing was happening. Went back to the doctor. And uh, it was still massively hard as a rock. It had spread underneath my skin and, and basically surrounded uh, a couple of the vertebrae in the back of my neck. 
And then he recommended, you know, hot, calm presses and blah, blah, blah. At the same time all of this was occurring, you know, with the massive pain from whatever the hell that was, I noticed I was starting to have uh, a lot of weird, shocking um, nerve explosions, uh, you know, all over my body. Weird, you know, I was having them in my hands, I was having them in my arms, I was having them in my chest. I was having them in both of my legs. Uh, these electrical shocking pains that uh, the one time uh, I got one in the side of my thigh, it almost made me fall because I could no longer support my own weight. And it's like a shocking burning pain, almost like, you know, you would have that sciatica nerve pain, but you're not going to get sciatica in your chest muscles, you know, your your arms and your legs, and they, they just come and they go. And then I was getting them in my face. After I had pretty much kind of regained a lot of my speech, my eye movement on the right side of my face, um, I started getting these these shocking pains uh, that that felt like somebody stuck you with a stun gun in the face and it was uh, you know hot a hot shocking pain and it only lasts for that split second you know it's like you you know stuck your your tongue in a, in a light bulb socket you know while it was turned on you get that real quick shocking pain and then you realize why wow, you just did something stupid now that has not gone away <laughs> I did get uh, all of the liquid that came out of the back of my neck. It, it took several weeks, but it just gradually leaked out. And you would think that it would be kind of a crusty pus from an infection, but it wasn't. It was a, 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 a pink, clear liquid. And, and, and for weeks, it just oozed out. I had to wear a very, very large Band-Aid on the back of my neck. Now, it has completely... And look, and folks, I have photographs of all of this. <laughs> I was going to show them to you, but, you know, I don't want to get my video flagged and I don't want to gross you people out. Maybe maybe I will do a video and I'll show you what, what has happened. It's pretty gross. But now, on the back of my neck, since this has healed, I just have a hole. It is perfectly round. And it's like indented. It's just a hole. It's almost like, I don't know, you know, like I got shot with something. And that, just as I was about to make a, make my little comeback here on YouTube after, you know, the, the Lyme disease recovery, because I was posting about it, I was talking about it, a few of the videos that I put out there that didn't have any audio, I, you know, typed in some text and said, you know, I'm getting better, I'm, I'm going to be back. And in October, that's what I was planning, until this weird occurrence did somebody somehow target me did somebody shoot me with something hell i mean you could have any type of a small blow dart uh i mean who the hell knows what is out there that can disable somebody you know not kill them however the doctor did tell me that 
you know, he warned me that uh, the blood infection, sept septicism, was on the table. And for me to continue to take that antibiotic. Now, I didn't have any fevers or anything like that. Didn't show any signs of, uh, you know, going into septic shock or, or, or blood poisoning. But whatever that pinkish clear liquid was that came out of my neck from whatever the hell happened. really got me thinking because again back in October I wanted to come forth and I wanted to start to warn people about what is going to occur I had the thoughts I was putting the material together. I was continuing to do hours and hours and hours of research to make sure I was correct. And then, bam! They dropped me to my knees again. And when I say they, yeah, I may sound like I'm a little paranoid, but folks, <sighs> too many coincidences. So this is what we are facing. This is this is what I have faced this past year. I'm going to have more and more information coming out. I think now I've pretty much regained control. And hopefully nothing else occurs. I do know one thing. There have been several, you know, kind of odd occurrences. Um, you know, uh, trying to ruin what little finances that, that I have left. You know, with with the uh, the uh, on occurrences uh, of these relapses, uh, you know, I'm down for days. Going to work is that's impossible. Couldn't walk, let alone drive a car. My eyesight, my eyesight has gotten so bad, uh, I can't even read like small text. I tried readers, went to the eye doctor. Um, you know, they kind of said it was a you know an effect of the the Lyme disease. Uh, will my vision get better? Possibly in the course of a, of a year. Should I get glasses? Well, your you know my vision changes on a, on a daily basis. Sometimes, uh, you know, sometimes I could see very very well. Other times I can't. So, it, you know, last year was a living hell for me. I think some things have been thrown into my path as uh, uh, major obstacles to shut me up. I mean, you got to admit, it worked. But I'm going to continue to do what I have to do, bottom line. If any of you folks would like to make a donation to Planet X News to, to keep me going, to keep us going, to keep this information flowing, you could use the Planet X News PayPal link. And uh, listen, doesn't have to be major. Any help, any help, is uh, is definitely well needed at this time. It's it's been very very tough, folks. You know, missing work constant, and uh, you know they start getting tired of it. And next thing you know, they want to get rid of you. 
you know, I've already gotten word on January 11th, I'm going to be losing my health insurance, which has been worrying me to death because what happens if I undergo another health issue? <laughs> you know, so a lot of pressures have been burdening me, worrying me, you know. But you know me, you know, I will, I will press on. I will press on to the very, very end. Now is pretty much a time for us to come together and break through this information. Keep an eye on everything that is going on around this world. That is something that I'm going to be doing. Today is just going to be a new beginning. But sadly, it may be a new beginning to the end. I don't know. But what I do know is all of the evidence that is coming together, all the global catastrophes that are occurring on a daily basis, minute by minute, you cannot turn a blind eye to that. There are very, very unusual things that are occurring. There's a battle being conducted with our sun and this, this stellar object. It's not, it's not going away, but it is affecting our sun and our sun affects this planet. It all revolves on the magnetism of our planet our magnetic field which protects our planet. You see where I'm going. Yes, it is scary. But, but, we cannot give up. We have to stand up. We have to continue to learn, analyze, investigate, what is happening. I believe the rest of the world should know. And unfortunately, they won't. Start preparing some things. You know, I don't want to sound like a prepper, but, you know, listen, it, it uh, you know, it doesn't hurt to, you know, have some things around the house. Uh, you know, kind of like the stormy season when you definitely going to have a flashlight, some batteries, you know, back to the preppers with the, you know, canned foods and, you know, everything that you think that you could possibly need to survive. Kind of, uh, you know, start keeping that in mind. Start learning a little bit more about the outdoors. Maybe just sit down one day and get into deep thought and think. What in the hell would I do today if the lights just went out and there was no more electricity, there was no more internet, there was no more cell phones? You have no natural gas for heating in your home or cooking. No electricity, no running water. What are you going to do? So, in this time, start to think about that. And, you know, we'll have some talks about it. And I am going to start to show you folks uh, the evidence. I'm going to produce the evidence. I'm going to show you. And uh, we're going to also continue our research and monitoring this monster that is orbiting our sun. And as you can see, the, the latest photographs were from December 3rd, 2023. I haven't been able to retrieve any more data. Uh, you know, well, it's been a month. I don't know what's going on, but I keep at it. Uh, there was a good, there was a long period of time of uh, two weeks, um, the last two weeks of December, 
that I wasn't getting any data, nothing, nothing to analyze, nothing to peek through the veil that they create to disguise what you're seeing on your screen right now. Shocking. Blows your mind. But listen, keep your mind fresh. Never stop using your brain power. Never stop learning. Remember, knowledge is power. All right, folks. So listen, I want you to continue to stay tuned. Uh, please, you know, share this video on your social media accounts. And, uh, you know, make sure your notifications are set. So you receive notifications when I do upload videos. Uh, from here on out, as long as I'm feeling better and, 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 and able to do so, I'm going to try to put out a daily video every single day, and we are going to start to document the cataclysms that are surrounding this entire planet. What is occurring on Earth today? And none of it is going to be good news but we must maintain our intelligence meaning our information gathering as soon as i get some more data on this uh, planet x stellar core as soon as i get some fresh photographs in um you know i'll get them out to you guys and, and we'll take a look at them uh, but we already know we we already know what is occurring and again if any of you want to make contributions uh, to Planet X News, keep us going. The link for our PayPal account, it's in the description box under all of our videos. Just click on that. You can make a small donation. Everything helps out tremendously. Believe me. And if you want to drop me an email just to say, hello, you know, how are you doing? perfectly fine i'll get to them as soon as i can all right folks so listen i'm going to go ahead and sign off now uh keep an eye to the sky because there's a lot of things going on up above us with all of the crisscrossing of our skies that we're going to get into uh you know in the next couple of weeks i've been keeping an eye on that crisscrossing thing you know what i'm talking about going on in the sky daily we're going to start talking about that, okay, because there's definitely something occurring up above us every day around the world, but not in every country, kind of like, you know, spraying us like bugs. I've dug into some additional information on that subject, okay, so once again, you know, keep your chin up. And keep your eyes and your ears open and watch for me and another broadcast tomorrow. Take care, folks. Thank you very much. God bless.